Chapter 8 An Evening Out Section 1 Shortly after Arthur had redecorated the kitchen, he and Mary were sitting at home one evening when he suddenly realized that it was Mary's birthday in three days' time. It occurred to him that she might like to go out somewhere to celebrate the occasion, perhaps to a show or something, with dinner afterwards. Mary was delighted when he put this idea to her. She'd had a suspicion that Arthur might actually have forgotten all about her birthday. They'd been in London for several months and not once had they managed so far to go to the theatre. What was more, they had no idea what was on. As it was Sunday, they had a couple of Sunday papers, so they turned to the page advertising entertainments. Arthur looked at the Observer, while Mary went through the list in the Sunday Times. Arthur asked Mary if she'd rather go to a ballet, a musical show, or a straight play. Mary said that she wasn't sure. She would rather look at all the possibilities and make her mind up later on. First of all, she thought that she might like to see Robert Morley, who was appearing in A Ghost on Tiptoe. She had seen him play in some comedy or other a few years ago on a day out in London with her mother. She couldn't remember the title of the play. Then she wondered whether she might like to see the Royal Shakespeare Company performing a Midsummer Night's Dream at the Old Vic. She had done the play as a set book for O-level English literature at school. She had once seen it performed by an enthusiastic but somewhat incompetent amateur company at her local church hall in Middleford. In the end, she told Arthur she'd leave the decision up to him. So the following day, Arthur went round to the local ticket agency and found that on Mary's birthday there were very few theatres where there were any reasonably priced seats still available. If he had gone to the agency earlier, there might have been more choice. But now the only practical proposition was the Jack Seagrave show at the Victoria Palace. This was a kind of music and variety entertainment with the centre of attraction being the popular comedian, Jack Seagrave. Section 2 The theatre, especially in London, is very popular with all kinds of people and offers a surprising variety of entertainment. Most people who visit London make a point of going to the theatre at least once during their stay. There are over 50 theatres in London and the kind of entertainment they offer is very varied indeed. One of the most popular kinds of show is the spectacular musical. Shows like Oklahoma, My Fair Lady, or Camelot, or more recently the rock operas like Jesus Christ Superstar, Hair, or Godspell. A very special kind of show can be seen at the London Palladium or the Victoria Palace featuring the most famous entertainers of the day, both British and international, who might be comedians, singers, groups of musicians or other performers. They are the heirs to the tradition of the old English music hall, so well described in J.B. Priestley's novel The Good Companions, which at the time of writing has been adapted as a musical and is being shown in the West End. The majority of theatres, however, show straight plays, which are basically of two kinds, those intended for amusement only, and the more serious kind of play. The former are usually domestic comedies, farces, satirical pieces, or thrillers. The latter include the classics, such as Shakespeare, Sheridan, Shaw and Oscar Wilde and also plays by modern writers such as Osborne, Pinter, Wesker or Story. Of course, like many other capitals, London has its share of opera and ballet, 
which may be seen at the Sadler's Wells Theatre or Covent Garden. To these theatres and those offering similar fare come internationally famous companies, such as the Bolshoi from the Soviet Union, the Dance Theatre of Harlem from the United States, the Stuttgart Ballet from Germany, or the Vienna State Opera from Austria. Dialogue. Come on, Mary. It's the interval now, and if we don't get to the bar pretty quickly, we'll never get a drink. Well, I've got to go to the ladies first, actually. Okay. Tell me what you want, and I'll see you there. The bar, I mean, not the ladies. <laughs> oh, dear, I'm not sure, really. Come on, Mary, make up your mind. Half the audience has got there already by now. I'd rather not have to spend the whole interval queuing. I think I'd like a sweet sherry. Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm rather thirsty, so I think I'd rather have a lager. Is that okay? Yes, of course. Now, hurry up. <laughs> Oh, dear. You might have made up your face afterwards. I've never seen so many people all waiting to be served at once. Anyway, I've managed to get us a drink each. Yes, it is very crowded, isn't it? What do you think of the show so far? Mm, yes, yeah, very good. I liked that conjurer chap, didn't you? Hmm. Life of me, see how he managed to get that pound note into the envelope the man was holding. After we'd seen him burn it, too. I suppose he might have had it up his sleeve. Mm. <laughs> what did you think of Jack Seagrave himself? I thought he was terrific. <laughs> yes. I thought he was very funny. But I've already heard him tell some of those stories on television. <laughs> they were funny, weren't they? <laughs> understand that one he told about the two young ladies who had the same milkman, though. What did he mean when he said... Not now, Mary. I'll explain it to you later. <laughs> and I simply adored the little man with a funny walk. <laughs> oh, yes. Wasn't he funny? I've seen him doing that on the television, too. But it's much better when you see him doing it in the flesh. Mm. Did you like the man that juggled with the plates? Not especially. I've seen so many jugglers doing similar things recently that I got a bit bored with it. But you couldn't do it, though. No. I break plates every time you ask me to help you wash up. Mm. In fact, now you come to mention it, considering how many I've broken recently, wouldn't you rather I didn't help you? What a thing to talk about when we're on a night out. Hey, hmm? why has everybody left all of a sudden? Didn't you hear the bell ring? Oh. That means the curtain's going up again any second. Oh. Come on, finish your drink. Oh. We'll never find our seats again if the house lights are out. And besides, we'll disturb everybody, apart from missing some of the show. Okay. I can't finish this anyway. Would you like to finish it for me? No, thanks. I'd sooner we got straight back. Practice one. Listen and repeat. A. So far. The show so far. Think of the show so far. What do you think of the show so far?
fee the man was holding. The envelope the man was holding. Get that pound note into the envelope the man was holding. How he managed to get that pound note into the envelope the man was holding. I couldn't see how he managed to get that pound note into the envelope the man was holding. See, bored with it. I've got a bit bored with it. Similar things recently that I've got a bit bored with it. So many jugglers doing similar things recently that I've got a bit bored with it. I've seen so many jugglers doing similar things recently that I've got a bit bored with it. D. Do it though. Couldn't do it though. You couldn't do it though. I bet you couldn't do it though. E. Didn't help you? Wouldn't you rather I didn't help you? I've broken recently. Wouldn't you rather I didn't help you? Considering how many I've broken recently, wouldn't you rather I didn't help you? That's the end of oral practice one. Oral practice two. You will now hear a dialogue in which you are going to take part. Listen, please. Let's go to the cinema tonight, shall we? We could see The Sound of Music, or、well, there's a new James Bond film. Oh, I'd rather see the James Bond. Do you think it's any good? Yes, Richard saw it last week, and he said it was great. I must say, I'm not very keen on violence. I'd rather see The Sound of Music. Well, I don't mind really, but I think The Sound of Music might have finished by now. Oh, what a pity! Are you sure? Well, I'm not absolutely certain. But I know it was on a fortnight ago. I hope it isn't finished yet. I really don't want to miss it. Tell you what, we'll ask Richard if he knows whether it's finished or not. Now you will hear the dialogue again. This time you must talk to your friend and speak at the same time as the speaker on the tape. Let's go to the cinema tonight, shall we? We could see the sound of music. Or there's a new James Bond film. Oh, I'd rather see the James Bond. Do you think it's any good? Yes, Richard saw it last week, and he said it was great. I must say, I'm not very keen on violence. I'd rather see the sound of music. Well, I don't mind really, but I think the sound of music might have finished by now. Oh, what a pity! Are you sure? Well, I'm not absolutely certain, but I know it was on a fortnight ago. I hope it isn't finished yet. I really don't want to miss it. Tell you what, we'll ask Richard if he knows whether it's finished or not. Good. 
Now, this time, you must talk to your friend on your own. Let's go to the cinema tonight, shall we? We could see the sound of music. Or there's a new James Bond film. Do you think it's any good? I must say, I'm not very keen on violence. I'd rather see the sound of music. Oh, what a pity. Are you sure? I hope it isn't finished yet. I really don't want to miss it. That's the end of Oral Practice 2. Oral Practice 3. Listen carefully to the passage. When you've heard it once or twice, try to answer the questions in your book. The most important period in the history of the English theatre was the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, when William Shakespeare was alive. Shakespeare was born in 1564 and died in 1616. He is the one author of the period that people seem to know about, although students of literature and drama will know about others as well, writers like Kidd and Marlowe. Shakespeare's plays were as popular then as they are now, and the theatre was probably the most popular form of entertainment available at that time. In 1642, however, the theatres were closed because Oliver Cromwell, who was ruling England at that time, thought that theatres were immoral places. The theatre was made legal, that is to say they were allowed to open again, when Charles II became king, after he had been forced to live on the continent while Cromwell was in power. The only other time that London theatres were closed was for a brief period during the Second World War because of the danger of bombing. That's the end of Oral Practice 3. Oral Practice 4. Listen, please. Fleming discovered penicillin. Now many people have been cured. If he hadn't discovered penicillin, many people might not have been cured. If he hadn't discovered penicillin, many people might not have been cured. Baird invented television. People can watch it now. If he hadn't invented television, people might not have been able to watch it now. If he hadn't invented television, people might not have been able to watch it now. Now, you go on in the same way. Fleming discovered penicillin. Now many people have been cured. If he hadn't discovered penicillin, many people might not have been cured. Baird discovered television. People can watch it now. If he hadn't invented television, people might not have been able to watch it now. Columbus discovered America. It's a rich country now. If he hadn't discovered America, it might not have been a rich country now. Somebody invented the wheel. We have the motor car now. If somebody hadn't invented the wheel, we might not have had the motor car now. Shakespeare wrote lots of plays. Most people have heard of him. If he hadn't written lots of plays, most people might not have heard of him. Bell invented the telephone. My Australian cousin rang me up yesterday.
he hadn't invented the telephone, your Australian cousin might not have rung you up yesterday. The Russian sent the first man into space. The Americans landed on the moon. If the Russians hadn't sent the first man into space, the Americans might not have landed on the moon. Somebody invented the tape recorder. Now you're doing this drill. If somebody hadn't invented the tape recorder, I might not have been doing this drill. Oral practice five. Listen, please. I'll pay for this meal. Wouldn't you rather I paid for it? Wouldn't you rather I paid for it? I'll write to the bank manager. Wouldn't you rather I wrote to him? Wouldn't you rather I wrote to him? Now you go on in the same way. I'll pay for this meal. Wouldn't you rather I paid for it? I'll write to the bank manager. Wouldn't you rather I wrote to him? I'll drive the car if you like. Wouldn't you rather I drove it? I'll bring the clothes in. Wouldn't you rather I brought them in? I'll buy the drinks. Wouldn't you rather I bought them? I'll speak to the boss. Wouldn't you rather I spoke to him? I'll take Sheila out. Wouldn't you rather I took her out? I'll find the address. Wouldn't you rather I found it? Oral practice six. Reproaching someone. Might have. Listen, please. I've cleaned Betty's shoes. What about mine? You might have cleaned mine, too. What about mine? You might have cleaned mine, too. I've bought Sally an ice cream. What about me? You might have bought me one, too. What about me? You might have bought me one, too. Now you go on in the same way. I've cleaned Betty's shoes. What about mine? You might have cleaned mine, too. I've bought Sally an ice cream. What about me? You might have bought me one, too. I took Jane to the cinema last night. What about me? You might have taken me, too. I've cut Margaret's lawn. What about mine? You might have cut mine, too. I've washed Nancy's car. What about mine? You might have washed mine, too. I helped Barbara with her homework yesterday. What about me? You might have helped me, too. I've brought your mother some flowers. What about me? You might have brought me some, too. I mended Natalie's bicycle last week.
What about mine? You might have mended mine too. Oral practice seven. Listen, please. Will you be quiet, please? She's asking him to be quiet. She's asking him to be quiet. Will you finish your work by tomorrow? She's asking him if he'll finish his work by tomorrow. She's asking him if he'll finish his work by tomorrow. Now you go on in the same way. Will you be quiet, please? She's asking him to be quiet. Will you finish your work by tomorrow? She's asking him if he'll finish his work by tomorrow. Will you know the answer tomorrow? She's asking him if he'll know the answer tomorrow. Will you listen to me, please? She's asking him to listen to her. Will you wear your blue suit or your grey suit? She's asking him if he'll wear his blue suit or his grey suit. Will you please give me some more housekeeping money? She's asking him to give her some more housekeeping money. Will you find out his name for me? She's asking him to find out his name for her. Will you please leave me in peace? He's asking her to leave him in peace. Oral practice eight. Dictation. Cover up the passage and listen, please. On the whole, I quite enjoy going to the theatre, except that I don't like the ballet very much. There's one thing, however, that annoys me, and that's trying to get a drink in the interval. When you get to the bar, the interval's half over, and by the time you've managed to get served with a drink. The bell rings to tell you it's time you went back to your seat. Another thing is you aren't allowed to smoke in English theatres, which is bad for my nerves. And one more thing, the programmes are getting more and more expensive. Perhaps I prefer watching television after all. Now you'll hear the passage again. And this time you must write down what you hear. Stop the machine at the pauses. On the whole, I quite enjoy going to the theatre, except that I don't like the ballet very much. There's one thing, however, that annoys me, and that's trying to get a drink in the interval. When you get to the bar, the interval's half over, and by the time you've managed to get served with a drink, the bell rings to tell you it's time you went back to your seat. Another thing is. You aren't allowed to smoke in English theatres, which is bad for my nerves. And one more thing: the programmes are getting more and more expensive. Perhaps I prefer watching television after all. Now here's the passage again. On the whole, I quite enjoy going to the theatre, except that I don't like the ballet very much. There's one thing, however, that annoys me, and that's trying to get a drink in the interval. 
when you get to the bar, the interval's half over. And by the time you've managed to get served with a drink, the bell rings to tell you it's time you went back to your seat. Another thing is, you aren't allowed to smoke in English theatres, which is bad for my nerves. And one more thing. The programmes are getting more and more expensive. Perhaps I prefer watching television after all. Now, check the dictation in your book. At the end of chapter 8.